Welcome back to the channel. This is Gillis TV here right on Clemhawks. And today, folks, we had a trade early this morning between the two teams on your screen, the Seattle Manners and Toronto Blue Jays. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button for more NHL, MLB, plus World Cup of Soccer coming up on Sunday. All that and more. Thank you guys for all the support. Now let's get to this trade where the Toronto Blue Jays have traded all-star outfielder Teoscar Hernandez to the Seattle Mariners on Wednesday in exchange for reliever Eric Swanson and a lefty pitching prospect in Adam Mako. Hernandez, 30, is headed into his eighth big league season. He appeared in 131 games last season, hit sixth with his sixth with the Toronto Blue Jays and batting 267 with 25 home runs and 77 runs batted in and an OPS of .807. The Dominican Republic native was an all-star in 2021 in a season which he hit 32 home runs and knocked in 116 RBIs. Hernandez played on a one-year $10.65 million deal in 2022 and his arbitration eligible he hits unrestricted free agency following the 2023 season eric swanson a 28 year old righty made 57 appearances last season for the mariners in his fourth season in the majors he was three and two with a 1.68 era and a whip of 0 0.913 over 53 and two-thirds innings pitch the fargo New North Dakota native played on a one-year deal just worth 700000 and is under control through the 2025 season. The 21-year-old Mako was born in Slovakia but went to high school right here in Canada, in Alberta. He was ranked as the number 8th MLB pipeline evaluation of the Mariners prospects. So, T. Oscar. This is kind of a head-scratcher because yesterday the Blue Jays let go of Bradley Zimmer, which, okay, that made sense. But they also let go of Ramel Tapia. Then today they go, hey, Blue Jays fans, we're going to get rid of another outfielder for two pitchers. So who do we have in our outfield right now? George Springer and Lourdes Gurriel? This trade, unless there's a prospect that's ready and they hope he can do what T. Oscar Hernandez did, which, I'm sorry, he's not going to hit 32 home runs, 116 RBIs, or 25 home runs and 77 RBIs like Tio can. This is just a little bit of a head-scratcher where it's... Are they trying to go for Judge? Is Aaron Judge maybe in the books? Is it maybe Brandon Nemo? Because I don't believe there's someone in the pipeline right now that's ready to come up for the Toronto Blue Jays. So it's a little bit of a head-scratcher concerning T. Oscar's been one of your top four guys since he got here back in, I think it was five years ago when that trade went down which was a really good trade by the Blue Jays, but now you're trading him for, don't get me wrong, Eric Swanson had an unbelievable year last year, and they're getting a rookie that hopefully turns out. Jays aren't really um, good when it comes to lefty pitchers, in a sense. There's been a couple really good ones, but you see, like, Ryan Baraki struggled here as a lefty. Uh, Kikuchi struggling as a lefty here. It is what it is at the end of the day. But that's this is just a little bit of a head scratcher for me as T. Oscar's an all star, was an all star, I should say. He provided a bunch of your offense. I get you're hoping Matt Chapman kind of gets off the snide a bit. But in this scenario, if you were trading someone away for Eric Swanson. I would have probably went with, sorry to say, folks, Kevin Biggio 
being more of the bench guy. Yes, Biggio could play more than just the outfield. But Teoscar Hernandez has been one of the vocal points of your offense for the past three years or more. This is just a head scratch. And now, like I said, are they in on maybe Brandon Nemo, who is a younger, plays the same as Teoscar Hernandez, has a little bit more speed? Or are they in on the big name Aaron Judge? Because this does free up cap space. Don't get me wrong. This frees up a lot of cap space. When it comes down to it, because Swanson was only on seven hundred thousand, and they get a prospect, Swanson's probably going to make roughly around five million next season, and T. Oscar was probably in the ballpark of, you know, somewhere between ten and fifteen million, so it makes sense, but at the same time, you're giving up the core of your team. The Oscar has been the core of this team with Guerrero and Bichette. Even he, if he's not as young as them, it makes sense. Or is this a move that, hey, we need to free up money because we got to get Guerrero, Bichette signed to long de- long-term deals, deals, especially Bich- or, uh, Guerrero, where Ross Atkins did say at the GM summer meetings that if a trade comes for a catcher, there most likely will be a trade. Well, I'm sorry. Now you just traded one of your core players. You're thinking about trading one of either Kirk Moreno or Jansen. And the one out of that should not be Moreno because he's going to be a star in this league. Now, is that going to be Kirk? I don't... It depends on what style and who we get. It also depends that trade depends on what Danny Jansen we have are we having the struggling Danny Jansen we see periodically or are we gain the Danny Jansen that just can hit doubles home runs you know he's always been good defensively but his offense is a hit or miss depending on the season now when we get back to this T Oscar trade don't get me wrong bringing in Eric Swanson is good but I think it's an overpayment for T. Oscar Hernandez. As we'll look at Mako's stats for last season as well as the other two. So for T. Oscar Hernandez postseason, he hit 250 with two home runs, four RBIs, and one stolen base, and an OPS of 1.33. He batted 267 with. In 499 at bats last season with 25 home runs, 77 RBIs, and six stolen bases. Now Eric Swanson last year postseason he pitched one inning with a sh- strikeout in one game, and he appeared in 57 games going three and two with a 1.68 ERA and 53 and two thirds innings with a WHIP of 0.91 and a 70 strikeouts. And, of course, Mako played in high A last year, playing in eight games, going 0-2 with an ERA of 3.99 and 38.1 innings pitched with 60 strikeouts. So he's a strikeout machine for sure. But this is a little bit of a head-scratcher as what are the Toronto Blue Jays doing? You just let go of Ramel Tapia, who was a solid in-play ball hitter, had tons of speed. Now you're going to give up Aaron, or uh, not Aaron Judge, T. Oscar Hernandez. Like, there's something going on that the Jays are in on. Are they in on Jacob deGrom? Is Jacob deGrom maybe the reason why they're trying to make more money here? It possibly could be, because if you think about it, a rotation with Jacob deGrom, Alec Manola, Kevin Gosman, Jose Barreos. I'm sorry, you don't need a fifth pitcher if you have that sort of pitching lineup. But you have to hope the offense is there. And who's going to make the offense for T. Oscar Hernandez? You're going to have to find a guy to fill in those holes. And I'm sorry, Blue Jays fans. I'm a Blue Jays fan. Don't get me wrong. It's not coming from within the organization yet. Not yet. There is no way they have someone ready to come up 
for them. So it's going to be weird to see in the offseason. Maybe it is Aaron Judge. Maybe they're trying to say, hey, Judge, come here for a year, you know, and play for us or something or sign and trade with Judge to a team. Who knows? But that is it. This is Gillis TV here right on Clem Hawks. Like I said, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more MLB and NHL news and World Cup coming. And let me know in the comments what you think of this trade. It's kind of a head scratcher for me, for sure. But that is it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you on the next one.